Hello and welcome to Titan Machine Tool. Today we're doing a video featuring an old school attachment that would go on your standard Bridgeport milling machine to do things that you wouldn't ordinarily be able to do. So we're gonna go on back here and take a look at the Quill Master. The Quill Master. Yes, this one's for a J-head bridge port. I'll take a look at that there. The Quill Master bridge port. It's for a J-head. They made them for M-heads too, believe it or not. But anyways, get a gander at this thing. Holy smokes, how small is that? That's pretty freaking small. So that's a 364th two fluid end mill cutting a, a grind relief on a 45 degree angle. And I'm using the Quill Master to do just that. Come around the front here and you see it's a 316 shank tool held in the collet. Use a, uh, you can see the flats on the collet. Use a little wrench, open end combination wrench. Turn the collet to tighten it up. You can, when I put it in back gear, it creates enough uh, back drive force to where you don't need to hold the, the unit from turning. But if you did need to keep the unit from rotating, what we got right here, we got a little, a little hole where we can stick a 3 16 piece of stock in there or an Allen wrench or whatever. And if you line the hole up, you'll be able to lock the spindle, keep it from turning in order to tighten it up. But the tools are so damn small. Once it's in back gear, it creates more than enough back drive to where you can just tighten that collet up with the wrench. Now, supposedly they come with, well, they did when you could get these things. You can't buy these things anymore. You gotta buy this from like on eBay or something. But apparently they come with two different size collets, a 1 8 collet and a 3 16 collet. But I only have the 3 16 collet. I don't have the 1 8 collet. And I haven't seen a 1 8 collet for it anywhere. So if you have one, you look in the part with it, contact me, let me know there, because I'll certainly take it off your hands. But anyways, this is what we got here. We got this articulating head that moves around. And we got some hash marks on there. No, no dimension, uh, no, no incremental degree readings on it, just hash mark lines. All right, that's all we got going on there with that. <laughs> Clamps to the spindle in, this, in the traditional right angle head style. Okay, you got your clamp, clamping screw that pinches it. Three and three eighths diameter, that's the diameter of the spindle, the R8 spindle on here on your J head bridge port. Three and three eighths diameter. Or well, the quill diameter, should I say, right? Quill master. That's the size of the quill. And then you get your other little screw right here. That's your separating screw. This has no pressure on it right now. Okay, you back that guy out. So when you need to spread it, spread this guy, spread and ready to be able to put it on your quill, you back this guy out, screw that guy in, and it'll spread this gap. But be gentle. Fanny be tender with my love because if you're not, I've seen a lot of these things on the internet that are broken. So people get a little too uh, rambunctious with the screw here trying to get it on and they crank that thing up and then catastrophe. You got a broken casting. So watch out for that on the internet if you go to buy one of these things on eBay or something. And then uh, when you're ready and you got it mounted up on your spindle here, you just back the screw out and then give it a pinch with that one and it'll lock on the quill. <laughs> So with this guy right here, I got a three axis, but it doesn't, it doesn't affect it. It still operates as expected because I can disengage my, th my third axis right there and run this thing just like a regular, a regular manual mill. So this is what it looks like from the other side. It's a little beat up with paint, but I'm quite impressed with it when I got it. I was worried that it was gonna sound like a cement mixer when it was running, but it, it's actually quite smooth. It doesn't make much noise at all. So what I'm doing with that guy right here is, is we got these parts right here. 
And we need to put a grind relief on that inside corner right in there. The drawing calls for 45 degree tool going through there, 40,000. So essentially if you had a 40,000 send mill, you could run that through there at a 45 degree angle and make that grind relief. Show you the drawing here. Essentially that feature right there. So we got those two lands and we need to take that out so that it can go grind relief. I'm gonna grind it after. Here's another picture of the side profile of it right there. We got that step down with that inside corner relief. Inside corner relief. That's what we're doing. Instead of tipping the head, I mean, you could put it right in the spindle, just hang the spindle out and tip the head. But I don't like tipping the head on this thing with this crazy third axis box on the front here. Kind of heavy. Forward and back, not as much, but left to right, tip it one way or the other, you got that all that extra weight hanging off of it. I don't need to do that. Usually when I tip the head, I'll use that one because I don't have the box on it. I'll tip the head over there. But hey, we want to do different things, right? And I needed to showcase the Quill Master, see what we can do with it. For nobody who's seen it before. It's kind of an odd duck, but it has its place and purpose, right? We'll run it in a few minutes here and we'll run it right through there and make that, make that clearance cut all the way through. We're not gonna watch it run because I'm running this thing slow as molasses in December over here. Cause I don't want to break the tool. I have backup, but it's a pain in the ass setting it up and getting it in its right location. So I just want to run, keep running them. So there again, we pussyfoot over here. We got this guy running with my drip, my oil drip. See, it's drip, it's dripping oil on it. We don't use penguin juice over here no more. I showed you in the other video that this baby was just all redone, reground, new to site, blah, blah, blah. So we don't use penguin juice. No water soluble over here on this machine anymore, only oil. So that's what we got over here. We, we replaced the, the water soluble with oil and it works actually. It's a very lightweight oil. Get it in there and drip it on there and just keep it lubricated. Everything works better with lubrication, right? So we're gonna cut that, but it'll take forever. This video would be 25 minutes long. It takes 25 minutes to run through that cut pretty much. But we go and do other things while that's running. But I will show you the marketing paperwork that came with this. If we come over here. And this baby was new and you got instructions with it. This is what you got. The Quill Master is telling you about all the stuff you can do with this right here. It's an attachment. And when I bought it, I got the QRA right angle attachment for this thing too. Look at that. That's crazy, huh? So this is the right angle attachment right here. This thing. I took it apart because I'm putting new bearings in it. This one was a little crunchy. So I got all new bearings for this. I'm gonna put it together, put it back together with new bearings in it. Right? But that goes on the end of that other unit. Now obviously with no end mill in it here, but this guy fits right on there, on that, on that turn diameter, clamps onto it like that. And then you've got a right angle head that goes on that attachment too. So that's this thing right there. When I was checking it out, I noticed that the spot where the tool, this is the spindle essentially that goes inside of it. And it's for quarter inch shank tooling right there, I think. But you can't hold, can't really hold a big tool in there. And if you can see, I don't know if the phone's gonna focus on that, let's back up here. If you can see, this thing's, this thing's all jacked up. It's all busted. Somebody broke that. I don't know how, but somebody broke it. So I'm thinking I'm gonna make a new one before I put it back together, fix that. Maybe I'll make more than one of them. So I can hold different size tools or see if I can find some sort of collet to put in there and replace some of it. But anyways, that's what's inside of there. Those are the components. There's the bearing, there's, there's the little gears. That's the spindle that the uh, that runs through this thing horizontally that you put your, your, your tool in. And there's the vertical spindle right there that comes out of it this way right here that the collet 316's collet grabs onto to drive it. But this is a little bird up too. It's got some burrs on it. It's got some galling in it. I might make a new one of these too. Haven't decided yet. But it's not high on the priority list here. But anyways, like I said, I got that thing on eBay with the right angle attachment. The right angle attachment's the, the real odd duck. If you've never seen a Quill Master, I'm sure you've never seen the right angle attachment, because I've seen the Quill Master before, but never saw the right angle attachment until I started looking for one. But anyways, that's what's going on here. 
right? They're gonna say, look, look at this thing, this is crazy. How would you do these jobs here, all right? So this is apparently the way they would market this thing to you. If you needed to get way down inside of something, cut the corner, look at that. Oh, inside corner under a, like a, uh, a T-slot. Oh, look at the top inside corner of a square pocket or a T-slot cut or something like that. And what else? Oh, we can get down in the corner of right there. Or you can get way down inside like that. Or you can get down there and cut that. Oh my God, upside down. Cut an upside down so you can see how they market that right angle attachment. It's pretty nifty. Down inside of something, blind pocket, get down and milk. So I guess these were like marketed towards mold making before we had multi-axis CNC. And where'd this come out of originally? Okay. Look at that. What the hell's that say? BHS Machinery Company, San Fran. South San Fran, Cali. So, gives you an idea how old this is, because I'm sure that place ain't there anymore, like most machine shops and, and tooling companies. But anyways, that's the Quill Master with the right angle attachment showing you all the goodies you can do. What else we got here? Ah, uh, we got an exploded view of it as well. That, inside the Quill Master. Interesting. I think it's pretty interesting. I think it's pretty cool. That's why I'm showing you. Yeah, the Quill Master. So we're gonna see it in action. So to put this bad boy on, I got a pneumatic drawbar, so I had to take the pneumatic drawbar off and go back to the old style right there and actually use a wrench and tighten it up. You gotta have someone, one that's a little longer than the standard because uh, you gotta hang the quill down over here. You know, I got the quill hanging out. You gotta hang the quill out to be able to put this on. This is run by a half inch shank. So a half inch shank drives that. So you got your R8 collet in the spindle right there. Half inch R8 collet. You essentially hang the quill down a little further than you need, but still enough drawbar sticking up so that you can grab hold of it and tighten it. And you pretty much load that baby into the half inch collet and draw the collet up, tighten it up, and then raise your quill and bring this guy up and make contact line it up however you're gonna line it up and then give her a tighten and tighten it down now this thing does have a machined feature on it somewhere over here right here okay you see that right there it does have a it does have a machined flat on it for orientation so you can indicate that to line up on some sort of access plane so when i first set this thing up here first go around never using it before I set this thing up like I would a regular right angle head. Right angle head has a, uh, machined features on it so that you can indicate the, to make it parallel to your axis of travel, either in the Y or in the X or whatever. So I said, all right, well, you must have to do that with this thing too. So I put it on and I lined this flat up so that it was perpendicular, parallel, parallel to the Y, perpendicular to the X. I said, all right, well, now it's straight. Now I'm gonna swing this guy on a 45 degree angle. And I'm like, man, this don't have degrees on it. What, how many lines makes 45? Couldn't tell, trying to count it out. So if anybody knows the scientific method of, of lining this guy up, please comment or send me a video showing how you scientifically line this thing up for what you needed to do. But pretty much this thing is kind of like swinging on a radius. So when you swing that thing out at four, let's put it this way, you gotta eyeball it. I don't know how to line this thing up with like any scientific method. If there's a precision way of doing it, let me know, cause I don't know. This is like precision eyeball line up here when you're setting this thing up. So I needed it on a 45 this way so that when I cut with the tool, the, the relief is at a 45. But then I also needed it, you know, it didn't, I guess it doesn't have to be square to the axis of travel. I mean, if the end mill's not perfectly square this way or this way, it really doesn't much matter for this because it's just clearance. And most circumstances, it probably wouldn't matter. But how, how, the hell, how the hell do you do it if it did? So what I did was is I put a piece of 3 16 a drill blank into the collet and tightened it up and held it. So I had a big, long projected line, right, geometry. I had a line, a straight line coming out of the unit. 
because this is all cast. There's, there's no straight lines on this thing, so there's really nothing to indicate to line up. But once I had the drill blank in there sticking out two and a half inches, th then you have a line that you can, you can work with. So I could set the 45 degrees, and I could also set it parallel to the, uh, the axis of travel and the y-axis. So that's how I did that. But anyways, we'll, we'll turn it on and let it run. And I was worried getting it at uh, on eBay that the thing was gonna be noisy as, as hell, but it's actually not, it's pretty smooth. So I turned that guy on. Most of the sound you're hearing is up here. Up here in the, in the head, up here. The spindle ring, you get down here. This thing's actually pretty quiet right now. I was impressed. Now I did take it apart and put some grease in it before I ran it. I didn't want this thing overheating on me. And by the time it runs the cut through and back, if you touch it, it's certainly warm to the touch. But I mean, this, the head gets warm to the touch when it runs for a long time. So I do one piece, I stop, I let it cool off, I do another one. No rush here, but you can see the lubes coming out of it. It gets warm. The spindle oil drips through, it's landing inside, wall lubrication. So, but anyways, that's the Quill Master. The Quill Master. If you've never seen one of these things before, there it is. It's actually a pretty neat tool. You don't use it too often, but when you need it, you got it. I don't have a seven axis milling machine, so this helps out when you got stuff to do. Like I said, I could just tip the head, but what fun is that? Then I gotta square the head back up, and this thing's heavy. I don't mind squaring the head, but this thing's a pain in the ass with the box in the front, trying to get to the nuts and stuff and whatever. So we're gonna run the Quill Master. I got a little program, essentially. Just brings the tool back over here, gets real close, starts lining it up and just walks right through real slow. And then just goes back through again and then goes and parks back where it starts to get out of the way for me to change the piece. I did five of them already, this is number six. So, let's go. We'll get the drip going for us. We want that oil drip. Everything works better with lubrication. That's a tiny tool. I don't want to have to break it and then start again. So we approach slow, 50% rapid. All right, that's it. I just make sure that this, this thing is dripping where I want it. And when I say we go slow, we are going slow, super slow. Super duper slow. And just send that guy in there. And she's gonna start cutting eventually, take my word for it, but we ain't gonna keep watching because we're already up to 18 minutes of boat of, of me babbling about something that may be interesting or uh, may not be very interesting. You never know, it's a roll of the dice with these videos. So there's the quill master in action. Okay. I got another piece I gotta do that's got a blind corner on the inside. Picture uh, picture this piece with an end on it right here. All right, we got an end on it like this. It's not open all the way through. Well, I gotta put a grind relief on another piece in this inside corner over here. So I'm gonna use the same thing, but I'm just gonna take it instead of cutting this way with it, I'm gonna turn it 90 degrees over this way, swinging around. What the hell am I doing? Terrible, terrible video here. I'm gonna just swing this baby around 90 degrees this way and then cut the grind really on the inside square corner of the other piece. So this is the trial run. This is the easy one right here. It's through, it doesn't have blind walls on it. The other piece I gotta do, it's got blind walls on it. So it's got a, it's got a grind relief just like this one, but then it's got grind reliefs on the two ends, the two blind wall ends as well. So that one's gonna be a little more challenging. So anyways, Titan Machine Tool is showing you the old school mold makers tricky device. The Quill Master. Quite ingenious actually. You can get them on eBay anywhere between four and seven hundred bucks depending on the condition, what they look like. And if you get the little right angle attachment. So if you get a right angle attachment that sounds like it's got rocks in it and you need new bearings, Hit me up and I'll tell you what fits inside of it and you can get some brandy new bearings and make it like new. All right, Titan Machine Tool signing off. Over and out.